All right, now that the big game is in the rear view mirror, it is time to talk ads. Hello, hello, and welcome to Ad Meter Live, sponsored by Verizon. I'm Ralph Yaversa here in New York. Let's give you a quick refresher on Ad Meter before we get into this year's show. Ad Meter was started by USA Today back in 1989. It is the industry leading tool to measure what the public thinks about the Super Bowl commercials. Here's how it works you log on. You rate the spots from 1 to 10 over at admeter.usatoday.com, and then we tally the results. Over 1,700 commercials have been rated since Admeter's creation, including 64 for this year's Super Bowl. All right, as I mentioned, this is our second annual Admeter Live, so pretty pumped about that because now it's a tradition. And we have a huge show planned. We'll cover the highlights and lowlights of Sunday night's commercials. Plus, we're chatting with some of the stars you saw on your TV Sunday night. Jamie Lynn Sigler joins us shortly to chat Sopranos and her Chevrolet commercial, and the great Serena Williams sp stops by later. But first, a guy who knows a thing or two about winning the big game, namely two, the two-time, two-time Super Bowl MVP, co-host of the popular ESPN Monday Night Football Manning cast, and former quarterback for the New York Football Giants, Eli Manning, joins us on behalf of Stella Artois. Eli Thanks so much for the time. We don't want to keep you too long. Let's start with the big game. What did you think of Matt Stafford's play and, of course, the Rams topping the Bengals? Yeah, well, I thought Matthew Stafford obviously was brought to L.A. to win a championship. They, they, were, they were bold about that. They told everybody that. They made the big trade. They said, we need this guy if we want to win a championship, and it, it worked out perfectly for him. And, you know, he played, uh, he played great early in the game. Went through a little, you know, slow points. You know, they lost Odell Beckham. They, you know, uh, they weren't running the ball real well. But when they needed a touchdown at the end, had, a, you know, six minutes left to the game. Um, he was, you know, kept going, feeding Cooper Cup. You know, they got into rhythm, drove him down the field, and uh, got the game-winning touchdown. So proud of him um, and, and him getting that championship. You mentioned your former teammate, of course, OBJ, who, who suffered that knee injury uh, last night. Beforehand, he was having a, an incredible first half. Uh, have you had a chance to reach out to him yet? And what do you think about OBJ now uh, getting a ring? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm proud of and, and happy for uh, Odell. You know, he's been through a lot. He's worked hard. I, I feel for him um, that he, you know, did not get to finish the game. I'm, I'm hoping that this injury is not too serious. I know he's recovering. Uh, and it's been a process of, of coming back from uh, some injuries last year. But, you know, he, he got his touchdown in a Super Bowl. He had another big catch, um, you know, on an over route. So, you know, I'm kind of happy for him and then concerned for him. So, you know, look forward to reaching out to him um, when everything settles down and, and find out how he's doing. Yeah, you know how it is after, after you win the big game. How long was it before your phone stopped buzzing? Yeah, you know, I think that's the idea. I remember mean, right after the game, you look at your phone. And you have like 120 text messages. You're like, all right, do I have to like go through all these? So I've, I've learned with these guys is over the years, have them wait a day or two, let them like, you know, you know, whether they're, they're not getting massive text messages all at the same time, and I'll I'll hit them up and uh, make sure they know, you know, that they remember that I did reach out to them and, and just want to congratulate them. All right, Eli, we saw a lot of you Sunday night during the big game. One of your campaigns, of course, is with Stella Artois. I think the big question after watching this is, how are your bartending skills? I thought they were pretty good. I thought they were pretty, you know, I kind of got the, the good pour. I mean, I can definitely open up a, a Stella. I'm pretty good uh, getting the cap off. So, um, you know, I wasn't really good at listening. Somebody, you know, one person asked for like a, a vodka tonic, and I just heard Stella. So I gave him a Stella, and I'm just like, <laughs> hey, I think you'll like this a little bit better. So, you know, I, I had to change. I had to do some audibling out there. Uh, you know, behind bar, and uh, but I think everybody was pleased with it. Yeah, there was a a little bit ahead I, I noticed on on some of your Stella pours, but you know, for Stella it works because you got the, the the awesome chalice there. The, it still looks pretty pretty good. So maybe that was intentional. I don't. know. You tell me. It's all about it's all about the look, right? I mean, you got to look good to play good. You got to you know, the beer's got to look good to drink good to taste good. So um, yeah, you you got to have a little foam in that chalice. That's kind of the way it's supposed to be. Absolutely. As I mentioned, you're all over our TVs. And um, you know, something that I, I think I was thinking about recently, you know, with Tom Brady's recent retirement, you're maybe one of the few people that can understand what he's going through, that pull between your professional life and then obviously your life at home as well. But again, you're staying busy. So I guess what's the difference between like football quarterback busy and business busy? 
You know, I think it's different. Just uh, you know, once you're in season, I mean, you're just you're in the facility all day. You're you're in there at six thirty in the morning. You get home at six thirty at night. You still got more film to watch after you kind of have dinner with the family. So it's just it's just a lot of hours during the season, and then the off season, it's more maintenance work on you know just staying healthy, being in the weight room, running, you're eating right, your 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 lifestyle is completely different, and and at some point you just say, hey, I'm I'm ready to relax a little bit. I want to, you know, spend family time. I want to go on trips. I don't want to always have to be in this regiment where I can relax. And I think that's kind of what this campaign is all about is making time for the life artois. You know, I want to save your life with my family, with my loved ones together uh, and enjoy those moments. And so I think that's what, you know, the decision Tom is trying to make. Making time for the life artois with, of course, the great two-time Super Bowl MVP, Eli Manning, joining us again on behalf of Stella Artois. Eli, thank you so much for the time and for joining us live, and uh, glad to hear you made it back safe from L.A. I appreciate it. It's a lot of fun. Great being with you. Eli Manning, of course, here on Ad Meter Live. Hey, let's continue Ad Meter Live, sponsored by Verizon, here inside our brand new studios in New York City. Joining us now, USA Today sports reporter, Mr. Lorenzo Locks himself, Lorenzo Reyes. And Lorenzo, it's been a, a long day for you. We appreciate you joining us. Let's talk top three for Ad Meter, voted on by you, the Ad Meter panelist. And coming in at number three, it's Flamin' Hot with their Push It ad animated but some big stars what'd you make of it yeah this just spoke to the absolute star power of megan Thee stallion and charlie puth we didn't even to see them to feel them and i think we have to give frito lay credit for dropping not one but two teasers which felt like the word of the month leading up to the game and that just let our our panelists at the usa today ad meter know that they were going to be involved even though they weren't actually in the ad and then once the ad went live the, the animals, and it, it was cute, it was funny, and that, that all delivered. Yeah, Megan the Stallion and, and multi-platinum recording artist Charlie Puth, the nostalgia play, of course, with Push It as well, as it, it kind of got everybody singing and dancing along as you saw this one on the big screen or maybe watched it earlier in the week. Of course, there were a number of teasers and a, a promotional lead-up as well with Flamin' Hot, the first time uh, that Flamin' Hot itself, the flavor, has had its own Super Bowl ad. We continue on with the top three on Ad Meter uh, in 2022, and checking in at number two, Amazon Alexa, reading our mind, Colin Jost, Scarlett Johansson. Did you love this one or what? This was my favorite one. Out of all of them, this, out of all 64, this was the one. I just, you know, celebrities, sometimes we think of them as almost like mythic figures that they're kind of unapproachable. And this just kind of cracked the door open into what their personal life might look like. And I just love that we got to see that intimacy. And the Alexa was almost like a third character in all of that. And if this one felt a little bit like an SNL skit, it's because Colin actually brought in a group of writers to collaborate with Amazon so that the jokes felt authentic and they felt true to basically who they are. Yeah, it definitely did feel very authentic like an SNL skit and uh, Amazon's done very well in recent memory on Ad Meter, uh, poking fun at themselves as well. That doesn't uh, hurt either. All right, top commercial from the big game according to Ad Meter and the Ad Meter panelists, Rocket Homes and Rocket Mortgage, second straight year taking the crown. This time they did it with Anna Kendrick and Barbie. Why do you think this was number one? Yeah, I mean, it's just what you just said, that star power of Anna Kendrick, and then the iconic brand of Barbie, that reach that they have is just massive. And they took a really fun approach of this almost like child's perspective, but it's still tongue in cheek, looking at a very adult problem of navigating a very difficult real estate market. You might be thinking about that too, Ralphie. I don't oh know if you took goodness. notes. Stop, please. I, I, PTSD. We, my wife and I went and looked at houses two weekends ago in the suburbs here around the city. And it's just, I'm, I'm, I'm glad at least with that one, it highlighted the horrors, but at least I got a laugh out of it in the process too. So, yeah. And obviously a lot of other ad meter panelists did too. And the interesting thing with that one is, I talked about teasers at the top. They took the opposite approach. They were very old school with this. Rocket Mortgage, they like for the reveal to be during the game. So there really wasn't any lead up, there wasn't any hints. And actually it helped them, it helped them out because they went down to the wire with this. They were in edits up until last week. Mm -hmm. So it just goes to show that there's more than one way to be successful in this space. And, and congratulations to the Rocket Mortgage team because when you get into that deadline and you're doing edits and recuts and so on and so forth, it's so stressful and it, it paid off at least as far as ad meter is concerned uh, with the number one spot for Rocket Homes and Rocket Mortgage for a second straight year. First time that's happened since 2014 and 2015 with Budweiser. Mr. Lorenzo Reyes, thank you so much, sir. We will see you later in the show to talk more highlights. Coming up, Serena Williams. And right after this, speaking of uh, a brand that didn't tease their ad ahead of time, Chevrolet 
Okay, yeah, we're going to talk with Jamie Lynn Sigler about that ad that reimagined The Sopranos opening. But first, USA Today was in Los Angeles and on the blue carpet at Super Bowl Music Fest. We caught up with a wide variety of stars and even got a little up close and personal with one of them in particular. Take a look here on Ad Meter Live, sponsored by Verizon. Everybody's in LA. The, the party is here. Do you have any Super Bowl traditions? I always love the commercials. That was yeah. always like my favorite. Time check. Yeah. <laughs> I was always a big yeah. fan of the Budweiser commercials because they were always so heartfelt. I just saw the Amazon Alexa commercial. Did you see that one with Scarlett Johansson and <laughs> Colin Jost? That one was pretty awesome because it's pretty accurate. I always like the Budweiser. I like the horses, but I actually like the game. I actually like the sport. MGK, can you define a mainstream sellout for me? You're lucky, at I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> Sunday night during the big game, the electric Silverado truck made its commercial debut in a Chevrolet commercial that brought back memories of one of the greatest shows in television history. First ever all electric Chevy Silverado. A whole new truck for a whole new generation. Oh man, where do we begin with this one? <laughs> Let's start with Meadow Soprano herself. Jamie Lynn Sigler joins us on Ad Meter Live. Uh, Jamie Lynn, thank you for the time, especially considering I know you're traveling right now and you're working. We really, really appreciate it. Don't want to waste it, so let's just get right into it. You okay. see the creative for this commercial. You see the players mm -hmm. involved. Phil Abraham, of course, the director of photography on the original opening sequence. David Chase, creator of the series. Robert Eiler, who played your brother, of course. AJ Soprano. What are you thinking as they bring this to you and you're deciding whether you're going to do it or not? Well, first, let me say there was no real, like, dis deciding whether I was going to do it or not. I think it was like a pretty given that, of course, I'm going to do this. I mean, you know, Sopranos, I, I keep saying the Sopranos is this, it was this lightning in a bottle, but it just feels like it's been off the air for 15 years. And every time we do something together, we do something about it or with it, it just feels like, oh, this is probably the last time it's going to happen. So when this came up, it was just like, oh my God, it's just it's literally like that saying, right? Every time they pull, I get out, they pull me back in. It's just like Sopranos just never dies. And it's so timely and it's just a perfect parallel with the Silverado EV and a new generation and Chevrolet trying to, you know, is moving into electric vehicles for this truck. And in, you know, in 2020, we got like a whole new generation of Sopranos fans, you know, people watched it and i think it was something like 180 percent up of, of of new audiences and streaming of the show and meadow and aj represent the new generation of sopranos and so it just you know to to film the commercial have it kind of be frame for frame honoring the original with it being sort of modernized and maybe you know optimistic like instead of showing a cemetery maybe we're showing up a, a playground but you know even in being in the car and shooting it with david and phil and them talking about what they did with Jim and then doing it with me. It was just a beautiful, beautiful experience and one that I will treasure forever. You know, you do mention yeah. this kind of new generation and it was, it was cool to see some things that we saw in the original sequence and some new scenes as well. What was it like for you, you know, working with David again and then, you know, being back in the tri-state area and kind of seeing what yeah. was new and what was still the same? First of all, working with David and being with David is so wonderful. And it's funny, it's like I revert right back to that 16 year old girl when I was being directed by him with the pilot. And it, I had chills because I said, I was like, you guys, I feel like if we wanted to, I could jump right back into Meadow. You know, it's, it's been so long, but it's with 10 years of my life and through the writing and the experience, I was really able to grow with that character and how much I missed her. 
Um, but a lot of the first day of shooting was at the Meadowlands, um, just static in the car of, you know, matching things with my wrist and the hands and in the rear view and things like that with a green screen. And I couldn't believe how built up the Meadowlands is. Like they have a ski slope and a mall and all like I, I hadn't been to Jersey in so long. I was it it's really looks like a different place. Beautiful, but completely different than what I remembered and when we were filming there. Yeah, I told with the racetrack and there's a sports book there now, yes. obviously, with yes. legalized gambling. American Dream is the mall you mentioned of, and of course, MetLife right. Stadium, too, is still kind of uh, shining there also. All right, so it was a reunion for you and in, in Meadow, in, in a sense, and a reunion for you mm -hmm. with David. Um, I know you have the Pajama Pants podcast and, and Robert's on there as well. Do you two get to see each other in person a lot, or was this a reunion both on and off camera for you two? We hadn't seen each other for almost a year. So it was a very big reunion for us. And then also just, you know, it was it was really surreal to be across, because we've, we've obviously been best friends since the show and spent so much time together, but to be with each other on a set, and, you know, and look to our left and see Phil and see Dave and some of the camera operators and other people that were in our original crew working with us, it, it it was it was wild. Like we never thought we would ever get to experience something like that again. So. Anytime I get to do something with Robert, you know, it's he's held my hand through so many of things, like our first Emmys, our first premiere. Like we were the kids, so we really bonded and stuck by each other because we were green. It was our first gig ever. So, you know, getting to do um, something as big as this, uh, I couldn't have picked a better person to do it with. Jamie Lynn Sigler joining us on behalf of Chevrolet. She's driving the new Silverado electric truck in this incredible commercial that, of course, premiered during the big game. Uh, as you're working with David and Phil and they're giving you, you know, all of these little notes about things they worked mm -hmm. on with Jim during the original opening, what's going through your mind as you're, as you're filming it and then going through this? Oh, I mean, obviously just thinking of Jim mostly, um, how much we miss him, how his presence and what he did was what, you know, was everything. And he just has informed me so much in my life as an actress. He taught me how to conduct myself in a set and step up for myself in a set. And so, you know, kind of sitting in his seat and taking his role um, felt like, you know, big shoes to fill, but he did his best to kind of set me up for that. And then as far as the characters go, I mean, Meadow was her father's daughter. So if there's anyone that was going to be behind that steering wheel, it was Meadow. Uh, the parking features, by the way, on the new Silverado, they, they could have came in handy when you were uh, trying to get into that spot in front of Holston's in, in Jersey. Jamie Lamb, That's because just... of this four-wheel driving now. I think we can see how well I park. So no, hopefully nobody's going to get – it's probably the number one thing that a fan will say to me when they come is, how's your parallel parking? Are you really that, that bad at parallel parking? <laughs> um, so now we can say I'm not. I, I, I know so much is still made of the ending, and we would need another half hour with you if we were going to discuss it. So maybe not discuss that in particular. But I, I'm curious, you know, had James not passed away when he did, was there any talk of – trying to continue this story in some way, whether it was picking up or a sequel or, or something else? Um, not to my knowledge. You know, I think that um, everyone needed at least a minute or a break. I mean, Jim, you know, playing that role was not easy. And it, it took a lot of him and out of him. And for David, I mean, he was living with Sopranos well before we even shot the pilot. And then through all of those 10 years, you know, he needed to go out and do his other things and, and creative things. But, you know, we've got the prequel, which was amazing, Many States of Newark. And I think that there's always a, a world in there that hopefully he will continue to explore. Um, but I don't think there was ever talk of, you know, bringing back our show and our crew. Um, one of the things I've loved, especially as a fan of the show, is hearing yourself and so many other cast members talk about what a big heart that Jim had and how, you know, he always wanted to make sure that the entire cast was taken care of, even when they were trying to focus on just compensating him. He wanted to make sure that everybody got their fair share and everybody got their piece. So I, I guess with, with that said, what do you think he would be thinking of this of this commercial? I'm sure he would be super proud. I think he would love it. I think he would get a kick out of it. I could hear him laughing about it now. Um, yeah, I think he's just, you know, he always... All he ever wanted for Robert and I in particular was us to just be okay and be safe and financially safe and well and happy. And I think that this commercial shows that we are 
Meadow and AJR, but Robert and Jamie are as well. And um, I think that's all he ever wanted for us. And so I think he would really be happy about it. You mentioned the prequel, of course, Many Saints of Newark. What did you think of Michael's performance? Oh, it was fantastic. You know, Michael's always been to me such a special human. And I think that um, everyone can see now his his great talent that's clearly been passed down to him. And um, I'm so glad that he put him out, put himself out there for that role and they chose him for that role. There's really nobody else that could have done it. And I think it's a beautiful entrance into what I know is going to be an incredibly long and wonderful career for him. You mentioned at the beginning how this show continues to resonate with a new generation and even the past generation, you know, rediscovers mm -hmm. this show. I, mm -hmm. This is going to sound so stereotypical, but I have a cousin, Tony. He's my best friend <laughs> and he's in the middle of watching this show front to back for his fifth time right now. Wow. Um, and, and he's and he's not alone, uh, of course. Why do you think this show has had the staying power for all these years? Well, you know, I think that it really changed the landscape of television when it was on. And what Sopranos did was it really allowed you to fall in love with a very heavily flawed character. I mean, we didn't really have that on television when it premiered. And I think that really going through all that time with just exquisite writing and performances, but like really raw everyday people that are not necessarily good, but you're kind of wanting to get into, you always, you're getting into the why of who they are. And then kind of as you learn that, then also kind of understanding how they survive and how they continue to go on despite the lives that they are leading. And, you know, you got to see it through a lot of different eyes with a lot of different characters. And um, I just think it's amazing that it still holds up today for people and that they want to revisit it because I think it is a show too that you can experience it and then go back and still learn more and more each time that you view it, I imagine. Before we let you yeah. go, we mentioned you're traveling. What are you working on right now? What do you got going on? Yeah, I am on a show called Big Sky on ABC. Uh, I've been having a lot of fun. My character came in in episode two. She was um, an innocent waitress hiring a private detective, helped find her boyfriend who was missing. Um, found myself in lots of trouble. And now I'm sort of coming back into the game, but maybe not so much of a good guy anymore. So it's been really fun to kind of take this arc with this character. I love everybody on the show. Um, we're up here in Albuquerque, New Mexico. So I've been here since August working on the show and we've got a couple episodes left and really enjoying myself. It's, it's almost like this version of Tanya, my character that I'm morphing into it. Like sometimes I'm like, oh, this is like who people imagined who meadow could have become you know what i mean she's kind of a badass oh i love it i love it um and and i loved you know just the opening notes of woke up this morning you you heard those during the big game and you hopped off your couch maybe the same way you hopped off your couch in june of 2007 when the screen cuts to black uh what yeah. a cool moment and and what an incredible commercial of course for the new uh chevrolet uh silverado electric vehicle and of course reprising yeah. a role as meadow soprano jamie lynn sigler jamie lynn thank you so much again for the time and uh, hopefully we'll chat soon sounds great thank you Continuing here on Ad Meter Live, sponsored by Verizon, Serena Williams, 23-time Grand Slam champion, is coming up later. But right now, we have an all-star panel on deck to discuss Sunday night's ads. Rejoining the show, USA Today sports reporter Lorenzo Reyes, and we have joining the show for her first time, Shannon Miller, creative and inclusion editor at Adweek. Shannon, thank you so much for joining us, because it's not just the Super Bowl for the NFL, it's the Super Bowl for ads as well. So you and the team at Adweek, obviously, very, very busy. Uh, we got to just start off with this because we've gone this long in the show, 23 minutes we've gone on AdMeter Live, and we have not brought up the ad that on AdMeter ranks 64th out of 64, yet AdWeek says it was the best, and that of course is the QR code bouncing around from Coinbase. Shannon, what is AdWeek's rationale here? Well, um, when it comes to <laughs> divisive ads, I don't think it gets any more polarizing than Coinbase. And when you um, think of where it landed on the ad meter versus where it landed amongst a lot of marketers, both are very much correct um, in terms of flash, in terms of cohesiveness, maybe not um, the most um, winning among viewers. But when you talk about ads that are memorable, that you'll be talking about for years to come, Coinbase was really it. It was such a community building moment. Um, when you think about 
you know, how many people whipped out their phones just to figure out what was going on. <laughs> it was such a smart way to use that little bit of time. So love it or hate it, it's the most memorable of the bunch. And here we are talking about it now. Lorenzo, did you scan the QR code? Or I mean, obviously QR codes have been quite the comeback here with COVID. I did, but it actually took me a solid five to 10 seconds where I was like, wait, what's happening? Right. But once I did it, then I saw it made sense. No, I, I agree with all of that, Shannon. I just, I wonder if they went maybe too far, where if they could have maybe done a hybrid sort of scenario where um, they had maybe some more instruction or maybe bring in a celebrity, something like that. I get that that didn't maybe align with their, their uh, philosophy, but the thing is, as much engagement as I got, and this might end up being the most engaged ad that we saw. This, right. I still think there are probably millions of Americans who don't know what happened or don't know anything about Coinbase. <laughs> right, yeah, that, that could be the case. Of course, we saw a, a number of diff different crypto uh, ads and, and, and platforms last night, crypto.com with LeBron James. Uh, of them, it seems like FTX did the best as far as ad meter. Of course, Larry David, that brand of humor uh, certainly works. It was pretty, pretty anyways. Uh, but another theme that we saw, Shannon, uh, with all of these big game ads was kind of this nostalgia play and, and even a bit, a bit of a reunion uh, of sense in, in some of these commercials. I guess of that genre, did you have a favorite? Oh, absolutely. Um, I'm a, a millennial through and through. Um, so I was raised by Dr. Evil. So <laughs> seeing General Motors um, sort of Dr. Evil reunion of his sort of cohort of baddies was a lot of fun. And it was really um, interesting to see how the brand considered how he would fare in the world of today. When you think about how much our world has changed just within the past three years even, mm -hmm. um, it's kind of interesting. It's an interesting thought exercise to think about how these beloved characters of the past would adjust to the world that we have now. So I thought it was brilliant that um, General Motors explored the idea of him realizing that he's no longer the um, top villain, that climate changes. It was just a fun, fun way to talk about a really difficult topic, um, mm -hmm. but there was a lot of really, really great nostalgic moments, even down to, of course, the halftime show. But when you think about, um, of course, the Sopranos ad uh, with Chevy Silverado, Barbie with Rocket Mortgage, Cable Guy, there was just this raining, raining interest in looking back. Lorenzo, did you have a favorite of that genre? I, I, a couple that Shannon mentioned. Uh, there was also, uh, we'll push it, of course, too, with, with right. Flame and Hot. And uh, you mentioned Cable Guy, Jim Carrey, and Verizon. Did you have a favorite? Yeah, my favorite actually was gone from the game for 17 years. You almost forgot that Lay's was even a part of the Super Bowl ad space. Right. And then they get Seth Rogen and the reigning people's most sexy man <laughs> alive, Paul Rudd. But this, it, the, their chemistry was just it's why we loved watching their movies and why we still love watching their movies. That was all there. And actually, so I'm not one for like haunted houses, roller coasters, horror movies. I hate all that stuff. Right. But the ending didn't scare me at all because the beginning was so good. It just, it was a great way to get that brand of humor back into the space. And the fact that it was golden memories, I think was really appropriate. I love that we have uh, one of our best NFL reporters, Lorenzo Reyes, talking about people's sexiest man alive, Paul Rudd, only with Super Bowl ads and here on Ad Meter Live. You'd love to see it. All right, Shannon, before we let you go, uh, we mentioned some of the ads that did do well and didn't do well uh, as far as the Ad Meter panelists. And of course, number one uh, was Rocket Mortgage for a second straight year, 2014-2015, uh, as we mentioned earlier in the show, was the last time that it happened with Budweiser. And we've seen all these other new companies advertise as well. Was last night's advertising space maybe a change of the guard? I think so a little bit. I mean, when you talk about tentpole brands that you expect to see during the big game, um, you kind of look towards the Bud Risers and the Frito-Lays. You don't really think um, initially about Rocket Mortgage as a top contender, but for the past two years, they have really, really come out on top when it comes to crowd favorites, and this year's was no exception. Um, watching Anna Kendrick interact with sort of the Barbie generation and have this really interesting look at what the current uh, real estate landscape is. It was just a nice marriage of the past and the present. And Rocket Mortgage has this really good um, advertising voice when it comes to sort of getting at the heart of really cool pop culture moments. So I think that from here, now that we've kind of dealing with a back-to-back -back success, they're going to be kind of the brand to beat in future years, I think. 
Yeah, certainly, at least as far as USA Today's ad meter is concerned. Uh, he spent all day, it was on the Today Show this morning, breaking it down. And, of course, you know him from Lorenzo's Locks and all of his reporting he does with the NFL. USA Today Sports is Lorenzo Reyes. Lorenzo, thank you for all of your help and for being a part of Ad Meter Live. And uh, Shannon as well, of course, Shannon Miller, uh, the creative and inclusion editor at Ad Week. Uh, busy, busy time for you, but we love the work at Ad Week. Shannon, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. All right, coming up next here on Ad Meter Live, it's Serena Williams. But first, USA Today's parent company, Gannett, hosted a Super Bowl party over the weekend with the NFL Alumni Association. Here's your exclusive look at it on Ad Meter Live, sponsored by Verizon. What up, I'm Flo Rida. And I'm Rob Gronkowski. And welcome to our party. In the house, hey, this is Jerry Rice. Hey, I'm Emma Smith. Welcome to the NFL Alumni Legends Party. This is like our party of parties. Headlining this party with Gronk. I hear you guys go back. What's the story there? Oh, man, we the life of the party, man. Anytime me and Gronk get together, man, you just know it's our house. What do you think about the Super Bowl being in L.A.? It's great. Well, SoFi just blows it out the water. I played when it was Pasadena, you know, at the Rose Bowl. So I think it's a little better than the Rose Bowl. The NFL Super Bowl experience has missed California. I'm a favorite of both teams, the Bengals and the Rams. Will you go up to any of the alumni tonight and roast them? Will you bust their stones? You know what? Only if they volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> Take us into the party. Like, what are you guys talking about in there? You know, we're talking about, we're just catching up, talking about the old days. It's like a class reunion for us. I don't brag about Super Bowls we want and they don't brag about nothing. You learn a lot from other players that uh, competed at a high level. Well, the older guys are really just gracing us with their presence and, uh, you know, handing down knowledge that they've gained. The season is over. It is what it is. And now it's just time to get closer with guys and hang out, chill. Are you going up to the athletes or are the athletes coming up to you and saying, oh, my God, there he is coming from the office? It's uh, yeah. it's a little it's a little bit of both. Everybody wants to know what's happening next with you. Are you able to like escape that and just have a good time this weekend or no? Yeah, yeah, I'm having a good time for sure. You know, everyone's asking, but you know, I'm just chilling. I'm gonna see what happens, play everything out, and go from there. Sunday night during the big game, Michelob Ultra decided to get into the business of bowling with a few familiar faces. Take a look. And what an entrance from the 23-time Grand Slam champion who joins us now on Ad Meter Live, Serena Williams. Serena, thanks for the time. How are you? I am so good. Thank you. You're obviously no stranger to Super Bowl commercials. Just last year, you were in a Spike Lee directed spot with Mick Ultra as well. Um, so what did you think when you saw the creative for this year's commercial? So when I saw the creative, I um, was a little interesting because I was like, wait a minute, I like bowling, but I'm not the world's greatest at bowling. Um, but I knew Michelob Ultra, if they know how to do something well, they know how to do beer and <laughs> ads. So I was, um, I mean, it's a Super Bowl spot, so obviously I was super, super excited. What, what attracts you? I mean, obviously it's, you know, there's a, a huge audience, but is there anything else that attracts you to these Super Bowl spots? Well, growing up uh, as an athlete, you know, it's like, it's the creme de la creme, you know? So it's like, you really want to be in a Super Bowl commercial. It's like, it's you have like a vision board, that's like the first on the board, and you always get the checks underneath, like Super Bowl commercial, Grand Slam win, Wimbledon, you know, it's like all below that. <laughs> wow. Um, so it's, that's how high it is. But then it's not just for athletes, you know, it's also for entertainers and business people. It's just across the board. It's like the, 
the, the thing to do. So anytime to have an opportunity to be in a Super Bowl ad is really just beyond fantastic. I'm so excited about it. Yeah, the the ads are incredible, and obviously, as you mentioned, it's athletes and entertainers. Some of the athletes even featured in last year's spot were turned for this one. Of course, Steve Buscemi also in this commercial. What was it like filming with everyone? Well, it was really cool. So my spot was actually with Steve Buscemi and, and me, and I'm actually a huge fan of his. I've been following his career for decades. Um, and so when I saw that we were shooting together, I was like super excited and I just was, I wanted to ask him all about his movies and of course I had to be focused on set, but it was still like, oh my goodness, this is so cool. Am I an actress now? Or, you know, okay. But no, I mean, it was, it was really a great moment. Um, have you seen Big Lebowski or are you a fan of, you know, other, uh, Steve's work? I've seen a lot of Steve's work, you know, a long time ago, obviously Fargo was a big one, but there's this movie called 20 Bucks that not many people heard of. That's actually when I first started watching Steve and been watching him ever since. Yeah, I love uh, loved him in Boardwalk Empire as well. Um, you mentioned, obviously, the Super Bowl commercial being on the vision board. Um, do you have any big game traditions in your household? Um, so in my household, you know, I usually, if I don't go to the game, because often I go to the game, but if I don't go to the game, then I just try to get together with some friends, bring out all the Michelob Ultras, you know, some snacks, some, you know, chips or whatever, chips and dip, guacamole, like all that kind of fun stuff, putting together a good menu. Um, I like to cook a little bit and I, like, I more or less like to bake. So maybe like I'll bake some fun cupcakes, but small sizes. So yeah, it's really fun. Serena, obviously we're seeing you on the uh, television, of course, for the big game, but also we saw your family story on the big screen with King Richard. Now Oscar nominations are out. What does it mean to you that Will Smith gets an Oscar nomination for playing your father? Um, for Will Smith to have an Oscar nomination for playing my dad, it just gives me chills to even think about. And it's incredibly emotional because uh, we've had such a long journey and, you know, we're still we're still in our journey. And so it's a little weird. Right. But it's about my dad and my family. And Will Smith did an incredible job just really nailing my dad as a character and looking at some of the side-by-side -side footage of how my dad spoke and then how Will did it. It's just, it's well-deserved and, you know, the movie is so inspiring and honestly, I could talk about hours about how amazing the film is and how well-deserved it is and, you know, everyone I talk to from Leonardo DiCaprio to producers or they say you know this is such a great movie and that just makes me feel even better because it's like wow they're my colleagues now because remember am i an actress now you know or a producer like you know um they're my colleagues are like you know giving it full credit and saying you know it is well deserved serena we saw that direct tv at and matrix commercial so many times during the football season you're an actress yeah absolutely yeah we don't we don't have to ask, we don't have to ask anymore. You know? <laughs> um, hey let's talk a little tennis here how's uh how are you feeling how's the training going feeling good i'm back i'm back to training which is exciting um so i'm just trying to make sure i'm getting you know a little more fit training wise just getting my body and my muscles used to like the tennis training is that's totally different than just regular training and then yeah no pressure see what happens of course Michelob Baltra the uh, superior bowl with a number of familiar faces including of course Serena Williams Serena thank you again uh, for joining us here on AdMeter Live well thank you so much Meter Live, let's take a look at replay ratings. Yes, you can still get in on the Ad Meter Fun. We're awarding a number of superlatives. It's like, you know, your high school yearbook. You can vote for most inspirational, most action-packed, and so on and so forth. You want to go to admeter.usatoday.com and sign up. Yes, you can still vote for your favorite commercial. The voting ends Thursday. A big thank you to Lorenzo Reyes, Shannon Miller, Eli Manning, Serena Williams, and Jamie Lynn Sigler, along with the entire team here at USA Today in our brand new studios here in New York City. Josemar, let's get that bump shot real quick, just to show off this whole space here real quick. Last year when we did Ad Meter Live, it was literally just two people in here, and this year we have an entire incredible 
phenomenal production team, colleagues new and old that we've been able to uh, to see for the first time in quite some time. Uh, so it's been a lot of fun putting together this year's show and wrapping up another incredible year of Ad Meter, which of course has been going on since 1989. I also want to give a quick shout out to Lark Marie Anton and the entire corporate comms team, Kate Gutman, Russ Torres, Robert Padovic, and our video team. Also, uh, we only had one senior producer this year, Stacy Mello. Uh, our second senior producer, Christine Canetta, is at home with a new daughter, Mia. Christine, we hope everything's going well, and we definitely, definitely missed you this year. All right, before I start crying, in New York, I'm Ralphie Aversa, and thank you so much for watching Ad Meter Live, sponsored by 